Annamayang buddha bhidu dingaro ma se Yo so tata gato ara samma sambudo na tata gata resapia one the perfectly enlightened one uicha charana sampano he is impeccable in conduct and understanding Sugato, the accomplished one, Loka Vidu, the knower of the worlds, Anuttaro Purisadamma Sarati. He trains perfectly those who wish to be trained, Sata Deva Manusanang. He is teacher of gods and humans. Buddha Bhagava, he is awake and holy. Yawi Mang Lokang Sate Vakang Samarakang Sabaramakang. In this world with its gods, demons, and kind spirits, Sasamana Brahmani Pachang Sate Vapmanu Sang Sayang Abhinya Sachikata Vapave Desi Its seekers and sages, celestial and human beings, he has by deep insight revealed the truth. Yau Dhamma Dese Siyadi Kalayanang Mache Kalayanang Pariyosa Na Kalayanang He has pointed out the Dhamma Beautiful in the beginning Beautiful in the middle Beautiful in the end Satang Sapyanjana Kevala paripunang parisudang brahmacharyang pakasesi. He has explained the spiritual life of complete purity in its essence and conventions. Tamahang bhagavan tang abhipujayami tamahang bhagavan tang sirasa namami. I chant my praise to the Blessed One. I bow my head to the Blessed One. Annamayang dhamma bhitu tinga roma se Now let us chant in praise of the dhamma Yo so so akato magahuatadamo. The Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One. Sanditiko, apparent here and now. Akaliko, timeless. Ehipasiko, encouraging investigation. Opanaiko, leading inwards, Bajadangwe Ditabo in Yuhi, to be experienced individually by the wise. Tamahang, Tamang, Abipu, Chayami, Tamahang, Damang, Sirasa, Namami. I chant my praise to this teaching. I bow my head to this truth. Annamayang Sangha Bhitu Tinga Roma Se Now let us chant in praise of the Sangha Yo So Supati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sangho they are the Blessed One's disciples who have practiced well, 
Utyupati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango who have practiced directly Nyaya Pati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango who have practiced insightfully Sami Jipati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango those who practice with integrity, yadita chatari purisayukani yata purisampugalam. That is the four pairs, the eight kinds of noble beings, e sabhagavato savaka sango. These are the blessed one's disciples. Ahunayo, such ones are worthy of gifts. Pahunayo, worthy of hospitality. Dakinayo, worthy of offerings. Anjali Karaniyo, worthy of respect. Anuttarang Bunyaketang Lokatsa. They give occasion for incomparable goodness to arise in the world. Tamahang sangang abhipu chayami tamahang sangang sirasanamami. I chant my praise to this sangha. I bow my head to this sangha.
reflecting on the here and now, the way it is, the body's like this, sitting. Just thinking this thought, reminding myself, awareness of the body. The body uh, becomes conscious. Recognizing it, the sitting, the experience, the reality of cities like this. And the breath is like this. Now this is in the using the way it is in the present moment <coughs> before it <coughs> becomes uh, personal. It's just being aware of the body as uh, as it sitting is like this. So the way it is, or it's like this, is is a skillful means. Upaya, <coughs> to just uh, notice, because we could sit here and not notice. We could travel to China and uh, go around the planet a hundred times in our minds and not know the way it is for one moment. <laughs> so this is like awareness, establishing, coming together, composing, reminding yourself, it's just reminding yourself not, you know, to not just wander about in your mind, but pay attention. The body is like this, the breath is like this. And notice uh, st the mood or state of mind you're feeling, you're experiencing right now is like this. Sleepy or bright or happy, sad, uncertain. Or just, you know, maybe there's no name for it, but it is like this. Maybe you can't find a proper word to clearly describe your emotional state at this moment, but you can recognize it. You don't need a word to see. I mean, you just, as you trust your awareness, the, the mood, the jitta at this time is like this. So this, uh, the way it is, as is, <clears throat> so one time Ajahn Buddha Das was, uh, he said that if he was to be, uh, he stated that if he was to be uh, put on a desert island, you know, cut off from everything else, uh, then he would, uh, the only thing he would, would be helpful in that situation would be a kind of like he'd have uh, maybe a, an amulet around his neck would say, and it would say, the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't need to take the whole trapidica and the So trust this, but you know, recognize it's not your construction as a personal, you know, like uh, I know the way it is. It's as natural, isn't it? This reflective observing of your own body at this moment. Nothing esoteric or uh, highly advanced or special about it. But when we're caught in our own views and opinions and uh, we're just blinded by our Sakya Ditti Thila Bhattabharamasa Vijikija, we don't notice the obvious. 
You know, we can be completely mad, caught in all kinds of delusions that are totally untrue, just creations of total ignorance and fear, and believe every mad thought, every uh, emotion that we're, you know, be attached, believe, get caught in indulging or suppressing. But this imminent awareness is not, it's not, you know, even madness is seen. It's like this, rather than in, in trying to suppress crazy thoughts or indulge in them. Nor is to say that they're mine, I'm crazy because my I have some crazy feelings or thoughts at this moment. Uh, craziness, madness, is like this. So you're observing this feeling of uh, madness is like this. So that which is aware is not mad, is it? Maybe the condition that you're recognize, aware of at this moment is crazy, but that which is aware of it is not. And as soon as you apply the Sakya Ditti to it, you know, I'm crazy, then it becomes, you know, then you, you've lost it. You, you actually become a crazy person because you've attached to that identity, that condition. But as soon as you remind yourself the way it is, mindfulness, path to the deathless, the gate to the deathless is open, puto, tammo, sankho, then you, these, these are skillful means, words that, that remind, remind you to to look at it from this position rather than from attachment, habit, identity, fear. Then the sound of silence. No, this is just a review of, to remind you uh, posture, the breath. Observe the, the state of mind, the mood, and the sound of silence. Or as you, as you uh, develop sound of silence more than you. Start with that. You don't have to, you know, the sequence isn't, you have to do body first and then, then you're grasping what I'm saying. You know, Ajahn Sumedho says, start with the body awareness, then you go to the breath, then you kind of observe your mental state, and then sound aside. <laughs> That's the thinking mind, isn't it? You can't have all at one moment, you know. How do you say breath, body, uh, and, and mood? The words, you know, are, the thinking is linear, so you have one, one thought at a time. Thought moment, one thought moment at a time. So you can't think sound of silence and breath at the same moment but you can observe at the same moment, here and now.
So this linear process, dualism of the thought of thinking is like this. You can't have two thoughts in the same moment. And then thinking also, you know, the, the habit of thinking is based on, you know, the grammar. And so one word goes on to the next. And so the chattering mind, you know, the heedless kind of proliferating thinking process, it goes on, you know, associates. So, you know, you, you just wander around this, this thought and then stimulates the next one and on and on and on like that. So one can just can be caught in this proliferating thinking habit. It's a, a habit, thinking becomes a habit rather than a useful tool to use. And then we, it's easy to believe what we're thinking. So, you know, you feel, you know, somebody does something, somebody says something insults you and, and says something uh, rude and insulting and untrue. And so then you think, uh, you get angry, you, you would say, it's his fault, he's a liar, ma malicious, and I'm suffering because he, he's spreading bad rumors about me. Or, you know, then, then that's the Sakya Ditti, you know. You have no right to spread bad rumors about me. Uh, and you should be punished for it. And I'm going to see that you pay for that. Revenge, vendetta, you know. I'm not going to let you get away with that. I'm going to pursue you and make you suffer and admit your wrong. I'm going to push your nose into the mud, <laughs> humiliate you, and then my revenge. It's all sakyaditi, isn't it? Because maybe you are, maybe you're a malicious, nasty person that goes around telling lies and saying horrible things about very good people like myself. <laughs> Now, if this happens, then the, uh, you know, it's unfair, it's not right, it's wrong, I'm right, you know, I'm absolutely right, you're wrong. You, you should never have said that, that was malicious, and, and you should apologize. All this is true, say if this actually happened, you know, I'm absolutely right, and I'm right because I know you're wrong. You should never, you, you, you told a lie. You said something out of malice, evil intentions. And you should apologize and you should be punished for it. Absolutely right. But being right in this case is still sakyaditi, isn't it? And so even though I'm right, it's not liberating to be right. So, uh, observing this, you know, the way it is, this feeling of, of I'm right is like this. Now when you contemplate this sense of being I'm right is, uh, is like this. And you should apologize and I'm right and it's like this. Because you should. <laughs> and then you see, I'm believing all my shoulds and the sense that I'm right and I know I'm right. So I'm not going to, you know, give in. I'm going to stick to what's right at all costs. <clears throat> so then, uh, you know, the wars begin.
Now this is like the way it is, in, you know, observing this sakyaditi, I'm right, even when I am right, uh, on this conventional level. It's like this. Is this a peaceful feeling, feeling right and uh, about things? Is this lead to peace towards liberation, to have to be right or to, to grasp this sense of I'm right? as a position that one indulges in. So you kind of observe, is this, does this lead toward liberation, freedom, peace? Well, from my experience, it doesn't. It just reaffirms this delusion of I am, I am this person that's right. And that uh, and and when you're wrong, then I'm, you know, then I feel this resentment, and that you, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to speak to you anymore, till you apologize and make amends, and then, you know, whether I forgive you or not, something else. So it gets into you know, righteousness and uh, action, speech, and then we we start telling our friends, you know, about this malicious person and, uh, you know, you're trying to get sympathy and gang up on him. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not speaking to so and so anymore because he's spreading malicious rumors about me and I expect you not to speak. If you're going to be my true friend, which you said you are, you will not speak to that person either. <laughs> you have to, you know, blackmailing and all kinds of complicated, miserable mental states. So that's where, you know, this vipassana, looking into the nature of things, of, of dukkha, attachment to condition phenomena is suffering. And this you have to see from an intuitive, you know, this isn't, this isn't a, another statement to grasp, but intuitive, you know, observing is, is, is when I'm right and I'm attached to being right, does this lead to liberation or peace? It reinforces more than anything uh, of my personality, um, the Sakya Ditti. That, you know, this sense of I'm right is makes me, reinforces, okay, makes this Sakya Ditti even stronger. You know, you scream out the world, I'm right. It, you know, it becomes a kind of obsession. <clears throat> and that's not peaceful, it, it leads to, uh, you know, just more division, more anger, resentment. states of, uh, you know, seeking to avenge, to get even, to punish. None of these are lead towards liberation. There, you know, we all understand that emotion, you know, it's human emotion, but our relationship to it now is the knowing, the puto knowing dhamma, rather than me trying to uh, seek justice in the world and punish the evildoers and reward the the virtuous. So this is, you know, for you to investigate, you know, is that I'm right, is this a peaceful, does this lead to liberation? Or, and this increases the sense of me as on, the, on this ego level. I know people that always have to be right. You know, they, they thrive on being right. And uh, they're very unpleasant to be around. <laughs>
So anyway, check this out for yourself. See if I'm right. <laughs> So this is what, you know, with those Sakya Ditti, you know, to, to observe the, the sense of being, a, you know, being this person, this separate, this body, this personality, even in, a, in its good aspects, you know, not just being self-critical, but, you know, identifying with, with you know, with goodness and wanting you know, you hear people kind of whinging, saying, why can't we be peaceful? Why, why do we have to quarrel? I just want to learn how to get along and live in harmony and peacefulness. <laughs> and that is not peaceful either, is it? A kind of irritating whinge. So the way it is, you know, the desire for peace and harmony uh, is like this. Not wanting, would say, when, when your communities or families or Spirit Rock, when there's disharmony. I don't want it to be like this. I wish all the meditation teachers would just respect each other, support each other, help each other, and, and not just quarrel and compete and gossip. <laughs> Why can't we all just be good Buddhists and live in perfect harmony? But that's not the way it is. Things change, you know, conditions change, so it, you know, things go through cycles. Sometimes peace, sometimes disharmony and so forth. This is just the way the, the conditioned realm is. You're never going to get, you know, permanent harmony from conditioned phenomena. That's an ideal, maybe, but it's not, it's not the way things are. So then the... the... Um, Awareness, which is, un which is the gate to the death of the unconditioned. And this is, this is why, you know, this sense of refuge in this awareness, in Bhutto, Tammo, Sankho. Because this is, this is a, a wanting or not wanting, or right and wrong, good or bad. But it isn't trying to annihilate that either. It's not, you know, denying or trying to get rid of thoughts or kill, destroy conditioned phenomena, but it's, it's knowing. And so it, it embraces everything rather than separates. So the mindfulness is the way, you know, the, it, this word sati sampachanya is a human door to liberation. And when you contemplate this, there's no other possibility. You know, there's no, you can never be liberated through conditioned phenomena, no matter how refined it might, you, can, you can make it. And then this, this sense of karma, that we have the karma, you know, each, each one of us is, has to live with the way we are. And, you know, the, our karma is, you know, we have different feelings, different experiences, different conditioned attitudes, different cultural attitudes, generational attitudes, uh, racial attitudes, and on and on like this. So we have, these are all different. And 
how can you make all this harmonious, you know, as a, uh, you know, unless we, you know, you try to maybe uh, condition everybody, like in Brave New World, or <laughs> kind of think the same thing, and, uh, you know, try to, to make everyone, like, you know, um, manufacture uh, tin soldiers. Every, everybody is exactly the same. But in terms of the law of karma, that's, that's an ideal maybe, but that's not the way things are. On the level of karma, of personality, appearance, and all this, we're all different. And then, you know, groups have their karma. So, you know, like, like uh, identifying with being Jewish, just that has its own, you know, even if you, you don't see yourself as Jewish anymore, just by if someone else thinking you are, then you get, you have the karma of that. You know, so when anti-Semitism arises, then even if you're, you become a Roman Catholic, you're, st <laughs> you're still experiencing the karma of, of being Jewish. Uh, because that's just the way it is, you know, we, we, we see each other in these kind of generic terms or fixed terms, absolutizing. So being American, isn't it? Easy? Americans aren't so popular these days. <laughs> I always use my British passport these days. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like much either, but the um, but this is you know whether you know a liberal, uh, open-hearted, enlightened American. We still have the karma of that identity, you know, in terms of karma. So I mean, it's but it's not you know we can make it into a problem or. You know, we can think it shouldn't be. And, and it's right, you shouldn't. We shouldn't be judged by those perceptions. But it's the way it is. You know, un until every human being is enlightened. So don't wait for that to happen. You do it. <laughs> so now the Muslims, you know, the the, the Islamic uh, terrorism, you know, gives, you know, makes all Muslims look bad, then, doesn't it? So, you know, then everybody thinks all Muslims are terrorists. You know, so that, that you know, they feel very threatened. This time because of these fanatics. Because then we assume that we say Islam is... Uh, you know, they promote <coughs> violence, and, and we, we believe these perceptions, and that creates this sense of they're bad, they're wrong, don't trust the Muslims. And then even people that look like Muslims that aren't affected. I remember years ago, the London Underground, they had these uh, bombers in the London Underground. And uh, London went really paranoid. And uh, then uh, I was at Chitters at the time, and we had uh, a young Mexican man uh, who had a dark beard <laughs> and, and a backpack. And he's going, he's, he's leaving Chitters to go to London. So, <laughs> Why well, no, I don't think you better go because you look too much like a Muslim terrorist. <laughs> because they killed one Brazilian man, you know, in the London Underground just because he looked like an Islamic terrorist. The police murdered him right in the, right in the London Underground just on this, because he looked like one. Well, this is, you see, this is karma too, you know, how... The, the prejudices, the, 
the the way we we're easily uh, you know like demagoguery in that we uh, we can be manipulated emotionally through fear. Uh, you can you know create uh, you know hatred towards a group of people because people don't reflect and don't know what they're doing. So you can always you know say things in a way and and have facts to support it that the that this this group of people are evil and should be punished or annihilated so the the awakened consciousness is you, you know if, if one is prone towards prejudice or believing all these the these these uh, uh, this gossip or these uh, views of others, we begin to, to, you know, we're investigating from this position of Bhutto Tamo Sanko rather than, uh, you know, trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong. So the karma also of being born, we have to get old. If we don't die when we're young, then we get old. And, and then old age brings it problems and death. So this, uh, this awareness of karma, you see, so the personality, the, the Sakyadid is all karmic. It's about conditioning. And, and when we attach to it, then we, we become like that. We become whatever we attach to, we become that way. So in, in recognizing the ignorance and attachment, then that which recognizes and observes is not ignorant, is not personal, not a self, but it is real. It's not another illusion. So that's where sati is the path to the deathless. This mindfulness is this. It's real. And then the words like the unborn, uncreated, these are these are not words to grasp and and believe in, but they're to reflect upon. This, if this is the, then this, this, uh, this awareness. If it, if it isn't created out of ignorance, and one is encouraged to wake up, then consciousness itself is like this. Consciousness is not cultural or personal. So consciousness is, is being, being to able to know things as they are. So it's a, it's a knowing, uh, insightful knowing rather than no, knowing about everything. So it's, a, it's here and now, it's, in, it's, a, it's intelligent discernment. And from this comes compassion and joy, metta karuna mudita upeka.
Knowing uh, this, accepting the way it is, uh, this can be misleading too. You know, because anything, then it easily goes into this kind of passive resignation. Everything's working out as calm. There's nothing you can do. Just, you know, just accept it. Resign yourself to it. And that's that. I mean, you look at that state of mind. You know, what can I do? You know, the world's like this. Nothing. To, nothing you can do about it. So you might as well just eat, drink, and be merry. Not worry about it because nothing you can do anyway. So just forget it. That now that's when you look at that mental state. That's sakya ditti. That's not wisdom. That's not liberating, leading to liberation. It's like a passive resignation. <clears throat> Or, you know, so it's indifference or just pushing away. Where the way it is, accepting the way it is, doesn't, doesn't mean uh, approving or liking, but it, to really understand something, you have to accept it. Like uh, suffering, your own suffering. You have to admit it. You have to accept it. It's like this before you can understand it. You know, you have to you'd be willing to admit that the suffering is this way. Then you, and you're accepting it. You're receiving it. You're noticing. You're fully with it. So in uh, the problems of the world, you know, like the, the uh, tragedy in Burma, it's not accepting it. It isn't just saying, well, nothing you can do. And, and that. But it's also to, un to accept it means to, to fully look at it and how how that tragedy affects you so you're not operating out of sakya ditti anger and hatred and then your ability to respond as an individual is is much better than than just reacting or just saying nothing i can do just forget it or getting caught up with intense anger and wanting to to you know, punish the evildoers, or you know, and be blaming, and then our ability to respond to the needs uh, and contingencies of the present, you know, are diminished when we're just caught in anger and blaming and resentment, even though they might be justified. So this is where this this the mindfulness is. Is, you know, it it doesn't mean that that everything goes right, and that you know it isn't a kind of magic formula that makes heaven out of hell. But it allows us to respond through action, speech, and that with wisdom, rather than just reacting from our own sakya ditti views. <coughs> So accepting someone, you know, a malicious person, uh, you know, accepting them doesn't mean you approve or you, you ever like them personally, but you can, and this acceptance, you have to admit that maybe, that you feel like this when this uh, malicious, gossiping person, when that name is mentioned, then you, you feel like this. You're aware, you're willing to feel you're willing to be aware of what you're feeling, but you're not grasping that feeling and operating from that feeling. So then, the, that then you're then the wisdom, spontaneity, thing like this can operate through these uh, human individual human forms. It can't operate if we're still bound into Sakya Ditti and, and that will always, you know, even if we try hard to help, we, we, you know, we, out of Sakya Ditti, we cannot really understand the real problems. 
We're just operating what I think they need, what I want them to have, you know, which might not be what they need at all. Because <clears throat> Sakyaniti can be very arrogant and proud, you know, I know what they need. I know their problems, and so I'm, you know, I'm right, and you just, you know, do what I say. This becomes, this can, you can really increase the suffering through believing in this sense of, I know what you need. <clears throat> it becomes patronizing, and, and, and it blinds you to, uh, to what really is necessary, what is possible in terms of practical help or relief of uh, a difficult situation. It's like the invasion of Iraq, isn't it? We, the intention, give, give uh, give the Iraqis good old American democracy. <laughs> and I think that we think it's, it's vastly superior to, to what they have, and that it'd be good for them to have the same freedom we have. So it's, uh, you know, this is, but we, we, you know, by operating from this position, we made a mess. So I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, and there are other factors involved in all this too, but I mean, even on the idealistic level of wanting to help get rid of a nasty dictator, an op oppressive tyrant, you know, we've, you know, it, it, that's, you know, we all, you know, nobody can defend or you know, justify Saddam Hussein. So he's a perfect villain. You know, he couldn't find any more worthy of everyone's hatred. <laughs> <laughs> and so it really, you know, it's easy to direct, uh, you know, and he, he, you know, he is a, was a nasty bit of humanity. So, I mean, it is, it, and then that, uh, you know, we've got to get rid of him. Now notice this getting rid of, annihilating the evil forces. That's evil itself, isn't it? So when we, out of righteousness, we want to kill off, kill the devils, we're actually becoming devils ourselves. You know, that, so I mean, it's, it's, it's like this revenge and punishment and uh, killing off the, the wicked, burning the witches and killing the heretics. In the very, and it's done in maybe very righteous attitudes because of this dualism of thinking, <coughs> good as opposed to evil. You know, they're polarized. They, they're, you know, so you get rid of one to to protect goodness, you get rid of evil. But it doesn't work. Because in the very act of killing off, then we, we, we're actually committing an evil act. So I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, we're, <coughs> you can hear Mara going, hey, 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 fool them. <laughs> all those righteous people, you know, going off killing the, the evil dictators. <laughs> I've succeeded. And so this is, you know, and you see this in the Bible, you know, the uh, Old Testament, they, you know, go and kill the enemy, dash their heads against the rocks, and don't let any of them live. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, and so if you're always quoting scripture, you can justify killing the enemy. <clears throat> but in terms of banya, you know, this is where, you know, to see, you know, is killing the enemy 
what is the result? When you suppress, when you try to kill your evil thoughts or resist or try to, and you end up suppressing, don't you? You reject, you suppress, you resist evil out of ignorance. Is there any, does it lead towards liberation or just more fear? And, it, and out of fear then we can act, we can, we can react in very unskillful ways to situations. So in, with awareness then we, we, we have this perspective on good and evil, accepting both equally, so it's like metta, allowing things to be what they are, evil is like this, hatred, uh, desire to punish and persecute, to, uh, to torture, to uh, get even, is like this. And so when, when such feelings arise, accept them and, and notice them. It's like they're like this. And this, then inquiring, and does this lead to liberation, peacefulness? No, they're not peace. When you grasp the, the desire for revenge, no matter how justified you might feel, it's not a peaceful mental state. It just it's it's a it can be an obsessive drive to you know for violence and justice and revenge and punishment. This is not a peaceful condition to grasp, but it we all have it you know in varying degrees. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's observing it, being the knower of it. It's a condition, it is what it is. It's like this, this feeling of, of righteous indignation, wanting to seek revenge is like this. Then you, can, you begin to notice just that feeling, this sakyaditi feeling of, Anger and resentment is like this. So you're observing it like the jitta, the state of mind. It's agitated. It's not, you know. And, 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 and if you grasp it, then you, you get pulled into it. So today, you know, this is just encouragement to uh, reflect and everything is, is the path then. As you, you know, anger, revenge, um, malice, all of the whole thing, the whole, all conditioned phenomena is developing the path. When we see it from this perspective of puto, of awareness. So, Every moment that you're aware is actually the path, the Majjima Bhante Bhata. So don't despair if you, you know, if you forget and get caught up in all your habits. Uh, you know, then, then you can think, oh, I've lost it, and my meditation's terrible, and you believe that one too. But, you know, just think, whatever, this moment, as soon as the, this awareness, you see what you're doing is like this. That's the path. This is the way of liberation. This is non-suffering. So it's not a, a matter of, of having a sotapanna experience and then, you know, it's just easy going from there on. Or you read about to attain soda, you hear all these different attitudes about what stream entry is and uh, who is and who isn't. And, and then you've got to have this certain experience that everybody's trying to get. Now just notice that, that, that this is what you're grasping, what, some, what the teacher says or what you've read in scripture. what you feel is right, Orthodox Buddhism or 
whatever, you know, it's not to deny it, but it, it, the, the sakyaditi of it, of grasping this, what others say, or, you know, creating this idea that I'm a sotapanna, I've got to do this in order to become a sotapanna. It's, this is the, the basic problem, this is the, the obstruction to sotapanna, isn't it? I've got to get rid of the three fetters in order to become a sotapanna. That's not it. You know, and it, it, so that this three fetters is, so you don't be, ever become a sotapanna, but you, you know, as you recognize and understand the three fetters, then that's the natural state. Sotapanna is the result of understanding Sakya Ditti Sila Bhattra Bharamasa Vichikecha. Not becoming. It's not about becoming, you know, you're an advanced meditator because you're a Sotapanna. It's Sakya Ditti again. So, you know, your personality is not going to become a stream emperor. So, personalities are like this and they arise and cease. So, so it's a you know, the worldly attitude is becoming and taking the stream entry and arahantship as a kind of, you know, like a BA, MA, PhD program. <laughs> it's not like that. You know, it's, it's, it's about awaken, observing, it's relinquishing, it's not attaining. You don't get anything, you don't achieve, you recognize, realize more and more. And, uh, and then you, you realize Dhamma more and more, and your confidence in Dhamma isn't Sakya Ditti, but it's based on wisdom rather than on belief, you know, clinging to a belief about Buddhism.